All right, so now that we've got the basic functionality here, we want to start to style this up. And we're just going to give it some very basic base styles just to make it look a little bit nicer. And you can tweak them as you need. So when we use the plugin, obviously markup is generated for us. And we can see this within our uh, developer tools under elements. So under the form here, you can see that we have a span now that wraps our input. And you can see that it does have some class names already here. So for example, TT, which is the Twitter type ahead uh, acronym, drop down menu. And then from this, we get the data set. And as we type, the data set gets filled up and we have elements within here. So we can use these class names to just apply some base styles. So remember, we created our style sheet in our CSS folder, and we have that linked in at the top here. So we can start writing uh, some styles in here now. And these are going to be very basic. So to the body in HTML, I'm just going to set a default font just to make sure everything looks a little bit nicer uh, when we're working with it. And I'll just use Tahoma, and then I'll provide a sans serif fallback. Now for the input types, or for any input, you can really just play around with this depending on uh, your current styles. But we want to inherit the fonts that we are currently using. So we're inheriting here. So all this means is that this drop down or this input will now have the same font as our body. Just keeps everything a little bit cleaner. So specifically for the input with a type of submit, and the input with a type of text, we want to apply some styles to this just so they look a bit nicer. So for the one with text, or for the input with a type of text, we want the padding to be 5 pixels on the top and bottom, and 10 pixels on the left and the right. So that's going to give us a little bit more padding to work with. And we'll align, we'll align the items that we get from this search to line up with the text nicely as well. So we'll make sure everything's nice and clean. So for the submit button then, we're going to apply a border of one pixel. This is going to be a solid border. And we will set this to BBB. We'll set a background color of white. We'll set the padding the same as our input type of text. And what we'll also do is we'll change the vertical align to bottom. That's quite important because so it lines up with the text input. And while we're at it, we'll also give the border to the input with type of text. So we'll set that to solid and BBB. So this alone is just going to give us a nice uh, looking uh, uh, input and a nice looking button that are nicely aligned up. And we can hit that to go ahead and submit uh, as we want. So still, though, we've got this drop down, which isn't looking quite right. Everything just looks a little bit plain. So we're going to change things up. Also, we are duplicating some styles here. So you might want to look ahead at just refactoring this uh, just to make things a little bit cleaner. So there's not an, uh, as much repetition. So what we want to do now, then, is we want to remove the default focus for the input. You see we get this blue around it. Now I don't normally advise doing this, but this is just going to temporarily help us to see how our Dropbox that comes down when we search lines up with everything. So what we can actually do is either apply this here or Twitter uh, type ahead gives us an input class and we can use that to say, well, on focus, we want the outline to be none. So if we refresh now, we, when we click in here, we get no outline. So we can use that just to see where everything's lining up properly. And remember, because we do have this TT input class uh, on the input, we can actually remove this altogether. Or you might want to comma separate these just to keep your inputs and your uh, uh, drop down inputs pretty much with the same styles. OK, so now what we're going to do is with the actual drop down menu that we get, we want to style this up with a border with the same color as our input, just so everything matches up nicely. So let's say TT drop down menu. That's the class that's automatically applied to the drop down menu. And in, in here, what we'll do is we'll set the width to 100 percent. We'll give this a border of one pixel solid. And we'll make that the same as what we did for our input. So that's BBB. We'll set the border on the top to zero, because otherwise we're going to have a sort of double border. And we'll set the padding to zero here as well. 
So let's take a look at this. It's already going to start to look a little bit nicer. Um, but you can see that this is actually, if we just zoom in a little bit, this is actually just coming out um, a little bit too much here. So what we can do is we can use the calc function, the calc CSS function to actually change this. So we can say 100% minus two pixels. And what that means is it's going to give us 100% width, but it's going to minus off two pixels because remember we're using a border and we have a border on the left and right and that adds up to two. So now we see the following. So it's all nicely lined up. So we've still got a little bit more to do here because everything here seems a little bit unaligned. You'll also notice that when I hover over each of these options, we're not getting the background change. So the user experience here isn't great because the users don't really know what they're clicking on and it all looks a bit funny. So we can uh, change this. So we have a class added called TT Suggestion, which is each of the suggestions that pop down and they're contained within the drop down menu. So we can say TT Suggestion and we can apply some styles to this. So I'll say uh, for the padding, we're keeping this the same as our input so that everything lines up nicely. So five pixels on the top and the bottom and then 10 pixels on the left and the right. We'll also give this a margin of zero and we'll change the cursor to a pointer. And that just means that when the user hovers over, it acts more like a link than uh, anything else. So now you can see that we get a little bit more spacing here and when I hover over, the mouse changes to, the, to a pointer. And you can see how this text is nicely aligned here with what we're typing into this box. But we've got a little bit of spacing issue just here. And that's because what we're doing is we're using paragraphs within these suggestions. So to combat this, what we can do is we can say TT suggestion and a paragraph, a paragraph element within that. We're going to say we want the margin to be five pixels on the top and bottom, and we want this to be zero on the left and the right. So when we refresh now, we get the following. So it's actually looking fairly nice now. Um, we've got everything aligned up nicely. The spacing's okay. You can go ahead and play around this with this if you really want to, um, but it's looking a little bit nicer. Now there's a couple of things that we need to do. First of all, the suggestion text that auto completes this input here is a little bit too dark, so it does look a little bit confusing. So let's quickly fix this up, and that has a class of TT hint. So we can change the color of this to something a little bit lighter, like BBB. And what that's going to do is when we start to type, you can see that that text is now lighter. So it doesn't interfere with the user knowing what they're typing in here. So it just provides that contrast. So next of all, when we hover over each of these items, we want the background color to change and that will sort of alert the user, this is the one you're currently hovering over. And then when they click it, they're sort of sure about what they clicked. So to do this, we have TT suggestion and we have a TT cursor class, which is applied when we hover over each of them items. So all we need to do is set the background color on this to something like DDD. So if we refresh and we start typing something, when we hover now, we can see that the background has changed to this nice dark color. And that is pretty much it. So we can now select something, hit go, and that's been sent through because our form, remember, is using that input uh, and just posting it back to index.php with a get request. So it's just appending it in the query. And that is pretty much it. We've built a dropdown with auto suggest coming from a backend file, rendering out JSON. And all of that was pretty straightforward considering the really great functionality that we get from this and uh, how easily it is to implement.